I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right. Can you all see that? Yes. Perfect. So we have a very brief agenda for today. Uh, we're going to take a look. Uh, well, actually, let's go through it point by point like we usually do. Uh, does anyone have anything that they'd, I think we all know each other in this particular group, small group this week. Does anyone have anything they'd like to add to the agenda before we dig in? All right, no worries then. Uh, the first item we'll look at is just gonna be a relatively brief design deck looking at some button explorations and interactive states. And then uh, Roman, you wanna talk about um, your exploration on the alert banner styles. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at this deck first. Um, and please, you know, let me know if, uh, actually I'll go ahead and just make this full screen here. We're gonna skip past since I think everyone on this call has seen this, the standard slides with the regular information and we're gonna start here. So essentially uh, something that I surfaced a couple weeks back in a previous SIG meeting was that um, with our April goals, one, one of those elements that we wanted to tackle um, before the end of April was button styles throughout the Jenkins interface. And that the first step in doing that was to conduct sort of a style audit to see uh, what existed currently throughout Jenkins and then what functionalities were tied to those different button styles, kind of bring them all together. Um, and, you know, for lack of a better expression, sort of audit them. And uh, it's a really important to be able to see where we're at now and what those buttons all do right now in order to be able to uh, move forward and, and maybe introduce some, some, uh, more, for, some more formality uh, to it here. So this, what we're looking at here is, is one of the results of that exercise. Um, I could have put a whole bunch more screenshots up of, of things we collected and there will be some of those on one of these next slides, but uh, not super necessary. And this is what it has boiled down to. Um, and I should point out, you know, like with most of these meetings, what we're looking at is a work in progress. Um, this is subject to change and, and we can talk about it. This is why we're talking about it here, right? Um, for feedback and that sort of thing. So this is not set in stone necessarily. There may be things that I've missed, certainly. There may be things that we haven't thought about yet. So with that said, have we have identified three different categories of button. And we'll take a look at those in just a second. Um, and, and I'll give those examples. But those are what we're calling standard, expandable, and submission buttons. And within those three categories, we've identified the need for four distinct button styles, primary, secondary, warning, and transparent. And now for each of these styles, of course, uh, there will be multiple different interactive states, such as the enabled state, disabled, hover states. Oops, my mouse is misbehaving. Um, for each of these styles. Now this gets a bit, uh, perhaps a little bit unnecessarily complex looking at it. So we will look at it in, graphically just in, in just a moment. But first I wanted to review the idea behind these styles. So the primary style is the most high emphasis style button, right? It's what we would think of as usually those blue buttons throughout the UI right now. But it's not the default style because in most cases, we don't want more than one of those primary buttons on screen. So our default style would be actually that secondary. That has a slightly less intense design for a slightly lighter emphasis. Hey, Yuli, welcome. Um, but it's a lot more common. Uh, throughout the interface. This notion of a transparent style is something new here. Um, it's very low Hello. emphasis. Hey there. It's very low emphasis and it's essentially, uh, it, ha it has interactive states that resemble a button, but it's just primarily in its default state appears as text. However, not the same thing as a text to link. Again, we'll look at this in just a second. The final style here being warning. This is high emphasis and it's very similar to primary. However, it merits a distinct style 
because we don't want to start introducing a whole bunch of different variations and edge cases to the primary style, which should really be just one color from the palette across the board. So that's why warning is a distinct one. So let's back up for just a second and look at, you know, this is just some screenshots essentially, but this is a, what, what we're thinking of when we describe standard buttons throughout the interface. So these can include these primary or secondary styles, but this is that standard category, right? And this is the current uh, iteration, the first iteration of the redesigned buttons. So we have four rows here for each of those four styles, the primary, secondary, the transparent, and the warning. Uh, again, as I said, you know, these being the most common, these are the most common throughout the Jenkins interface. And the idea here is that they exhibit really standard button behavior. So they have really standard, typical interactive states, right? Enabled, disabled, hover state, a focused state, and a down state. Now we think, and again, this is just the first pass, but we think that this um, variety of styles and these various interactive states should cover all the use cases we've identified for this standard button category throughout Jenkins. Anyone have any thoughts or questions on that uh, before we keep going? Just a question about the intent between the two disabled state for the primary and the warning. They are not very different. Do you expect mm -hmm. that? Or it's just, uh, it's disabled so we do not care actually? It's a good question. Um, you know, I saw that it's, it would be a little bit abnormal to, to have a distinct uh, disabled state when really it's just a color difference between these two. They're both high emphasis, but I think that this, the fact that it was a warning uh, style to begin with is certainly lost here. So I think that merits a little bit more ex exploration, like you're saying. Yeah, because, because if it's disabled uh, for whatever reason, uh, the user does lose that that insight into the fact that it was a high stakes element to begin with, right? That it was uh, a warning of some type that's completely lost in the disabled state. We don't want that. Um, so great, great question. Let me look into that. And just another feedback there. You are using blue and red for the color differentiation between the primary and the warning. We have some colorblind user. Do you think it's sufficient to differentiate the two? Uh, so what I've done so far for testing is I've tested the, the text in various weights against the colors and that works. But let me go ahead and, and also do that for sure. Uh, text the, or excuse me, run uh, these two buttons side by side through the various filters. I have a tool that allows me to do that really easily. And, and I'll double check, but I believe, and of course these colors are all coming from that palette we looked at a few weeks ago. I believe that that shouldn't be an issue, but I'm gonna go back and double check. That's a Perfect. Great, great point. Thank you. For sure. I have, a, <clears throat> I have a question, but I'm not sure if Mark also had a question first. Okay. Uh, so my question is just clarification. So are these buttons only applicable to the refresh UI or are we also planning to apply them to the old or standard UI of Jenkins? So um, the idea here is that sort of like with everything that comes through these SIG meetings, right, um, is that uh, it would be implemented into the current interface and that we're updating it piece by piece. So these would become live at some point in the near future. You know, there's no PR yet, but um, it could be because this is just the first iteration, but these would become live inside the current interface. Okay, as well. Yeah, and in fact, yeah. uh, we started looking at it inside of the current UI and that already revealed some inconsistencies, right? Like we've already identified a couple places where these need to be improved as straightforward a design as they are um, so that they don't clash too much with the current UI. So these will be improved as we go here. Yeah, that, that said, if we, man we find out they break a plugin or something, uh, we will put them as a part of the new UI, but our intention, we always aim for it to be integrated into the main line, um, enabled by default.
Awesome. Um, and then here we have a, a second variation here. So everything about this next screen is the same, except that these uh, buttons have a paired on with them. So we have some more work to do around defining uh, how we treat icons in, as part of this project, right? Uh, we have a lot more investigation to do there, frankly. But one thing we do know is that we're leaning very heavily on the material design library. So these states are the exact same, uh, these styles are the exact same, but we want to be able to incorporate the option of having a paired icon um, using material again because excuse me, again, because Material has widely recognized, uh, widely standardized iconography uh, to improve recognizability and understandability of what's going on in the interface. Any, anything, anything there? Any thoughts or yeah, questions? Yeah, I, 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 there's something I want to mention here. So here the, object, the objective is to show a um, how we would style by default icons within buttons. It's not like we are going to say, okay, this button with this class will have this icon, this icon automatically by default. No, it's if would you put a, an icon, a certain class within an icon, it's going to look like this, okay? But you still need to manually put the icon intentionally. Great point. That's very uh, nice that you're proposing that capability. I would just suggest you that you are also creating some guide about which icon to use to which usage to keep some consistency across the application. Because if you just let the maintainer or developer choose any icon they want in the set, you will have a lot of different things that are not uh, good in a sense. Yeah, um, but I think that's a conversation for the icon for when we tackle on the iconography. And um, first, we want to get through the buttons. Um, and the sidebar because iconography is going to be a really complicated task and we'll include the, these definitions and everything so i want to i, I yeah i don't want us for us to be blocked I'm waiting for that for something that's going to come after yeah we definitely need to provide that those guidelines and write up it's just a bit but yes you're absolutely right um and i'll work on that just not uh, not next, but very soon. Because you're right, having that um, those usage guidelines standardized goes a very long way. Yeah, one question: Do we really need guidelines, or do we just need a template library or whatever uh, supplied by Jenkins so that uh, uh, users can just uh, get these controls? Um, I think it. it I think it can go ahead. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Both. Ideally, what we would have is a component, a storybook, or uh, something about the documentation place for the UI for UI widgets, like Bootstrap has, like well, any other tools have. Let's say that's labor intensive. Um, so, and that's something we will not be having anytime soon. So, at least we want a place where we can say, you want to put icons with like this. You want to see what icons what icons are available. Look at this uh, page from Material. Other than that, I really don't know. Uh, it, it it really depends. There's much we can do, but it, all of the alternatives to document these processes take take time, basically. I know that's a non answer, by the way. But yeah, that's in the, sorry, Oleg. I know that's a non answer, Oleg. But it's really complicated to find the venue how to document something when we don't have a framework to document a component library itself. Yeah, so we have Jelly Talks. Uh, maybe it's not an ideal approach, but uh, Jelly Talk Clips uh, has automatic uh, generation for documentation. So if you take a look at Jenkins right now, you basically get mm. some documentation. Obviously, it's not perfect uh, for front end because it's basically Java doc like thing. Yeah, still it provides some documentation. And yeah, we also had the Jenkins design language. But Jenkins uh, design language documentation would need a manual maintenance, which is not something I would advertise. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. To be honest, for what it's worth, all worthy um, options to display a component library are manual. 
basically. Okay, you create the S item, you the markup is like this, but you, you need to add manually how it is. And that's uh, that's sort of unavoidable. Uh, I have one question. Uh, what is about the size? Uh, are we intending to create buttons only of the same width? Or is this still up to the users? Because I think currently our layout is totally strange because some buttons are 25 pixels, some buttons are 200 pixels. So from my perspective, it would make sense that we also define a default size of each button. I think that's defining a default and then allowing the flexibility is probably the right path forward. Um, we haven't really answered that yet, but do you, I don't do you have any more thoughts on that, uh, Felix? I do. Um, <clears throat> what I'm doing, um, doing my POC implementations is removing all button styles from, from Yahoo UI. All, I'm styling the buttons through the Yahoo UI classes, but I'm removing all existing button styles so that they are a clean slate. And for example, there are duplications on certain UI widgets. For example, buttons are restyled on, on hetero lists or on repeated elements are restyled on job forms. I'm, rem I'm trying to remove all of that and make them plain, basically. Mm -hmm. um, make them the same everywhere. That said, we will break some display of some icons. So when the back reports come in, I will re-enable the specific styles for the specific widgets, but that's when the report for when the reports come. All right. Something that just popped into my head here as I'm looking at the screen. A lot of these colors um, for some of these states that we see between these two screens are very uh, light and close to white and that's because they don't always need to stand out against their background if they have a stroke but the reason i point that out is because depending on your particular monitor configuration as we're looking at these the styles can look very different um, so you know we provide these decks and you can always uh, pull this up on a different device or, or look at it after the call because i think even as we're looking at things together over zoom uh, they can be translated differently. So I thought I'd just point that out and you can always check these out after the meeting. Um, all right, that is about it for this deck. Uh, the next styles that I'll be sharing with you in a future meeting will be for this uh, category of expandable buttons. Um, I understand that name might not be perfect and that's okay, but that's sort of this, this grouping of buttons who, excuse me, of buttons that have this functionality where you can drop down and select something from an item list. And that third category being submission buttons. Uh, I think still thinking about the existence of this category, this might not merit its own thing. Perhaps these should just be primary and secondary buttons on, on the bottom of a field uh, and that's okay too. So doing a little more investigation there, but these are, are the next styles that we'll look at together as a group. Yeah, I'm, uh, just yeah. a comment on the submission button. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Oleg, but I think these buttons are present only on the job creation page and nowhere else. So perhaps if you want to just rewrite a bit that page or to keep that aside for the moment, it could be potentially very valid to not spend UI resource on things that will be changed after all. Yeah, so um, regarding both submit and apply buttons, you can uh, use them in any form because it's a part of a uh, formal uh, namespace uh, in Jelly Tags. So you can create custom form, custom configuration, and there are examples of such kind in Jenkins where you use basically the same buttons. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Also, system configuration and job configuration, uh, I believe they use the same buttons now. Awesome. Um, and that's, one thing, uh, oh, sorry. One, one thing I want to mention is that uh, Joe just said um, we will probably be uh, updating this um, these gu style guidelines really soon. I mean, um, please, but we will not be sharing them. I I don't think we will be discussing them in a future SIG meeting because we want to move ahead with the buttons. So probably you can expect a draft PR. Uh, before Monday or Tuesday, 
the code is um, the code is a bit complex, but at least we want the, to to create the PR and to have it out there because the buttons is something that should be, uh, it's it's really different from looking at the designs and actually playing with them. So hopefully we will be and the initial PR will contain at least just the normal buttons and the drop down styles and the submission buttons if you want to call them like uh, that way will come, maybe may come later but yeah so good point yeah that's right Especially the, uh, with the man, yeah. Man, monday or tuesday maybe may, maybe in the weekend if i have time yeah. uh, one question uh, do you plan to modify the jelly uh, layouts or do you plan to touch your javascript layouts actually nothing um just i'm just i'm just uh, yeah. changing the styles on the yahoo ui classes I'm not even mm -hmm. adding new classes, new CSS. Okay. I would like to, but it's useless because all the buttons right mm -hmm. now, all the plugins, everything use the dot uh, UI, UI dash button, mm -hmm. all that stuff. So I don't want to complicate it. I just want to do the. Okay. Fine with me. So, whoever um, uses them will get update. Everybody. Okay. Hopefully. That's fine. Awesome. And then I think these other items added here are not actually, correct me if I'm wrong, not agenda items, just sort of notes from the, from the discussion. So I'll move them down here later, if that's right. Oh, nobody was taking minutes. Damn. It's okay. This, it. is a, this is a brief meeting, um, but we can, we can add stuff there um, using the recording, so. Uh, so is that right, Oleg? Um, are we good to move on to item number four? Or was there something else to talk about there? No, nothing. I was just uh, putting some notes uh, during the discussion. I just joined, but cool. I started putting notes. Awesome. Uh, so I think the next thing for today's call is, uh, Roman, you wanted to share. Um, so I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen. All right. I, I think someone has to give me permissions to share, or do I have that already? I'm not used to this. No, you, you, can, you should be able to share already. Yeah. Oh, yeah, green button here. Yeah, it's <laughs> OK, it's right now. OK, sharing my desktop here. Can you see my screen? All right, so this, yep. this, this is the um, uh, this pull request on, on improving the alerts that we have. So there was this uh, ticket reporting some weird behaviors in our existing alerts. So we had this the so-called success alert that appears when you apply uh, changes to an existing job, for instance, you will see this. So it was broken in the sense that it seems that the nav bar had changed its height, but the, the, nav, the alert hadn't. And I also noticed like, at the same time, this was maybe using like a bit strange colors and the icon was definitely like, was a small size PNG icon that didn't scale very well. And the same thing happened to, in other cases, like in this particular case, which you are copying a, a token, you would get this alert uh, also looking weird. Um, so I, I was doing some research and found there are several, there are at least four alert states. So the green one for success, the default one used for copy, but for other stuff as well. And then we had warning and errors. So uh, initially what I was doing was looking at bootstrap uh, alerts, um, the colors they had, I think I linked it here. Um, so you can show. So it was taking the, these as kind of sort of standards, applied them. There was some discussion in the PR and I think Uli provided this good resource, this idea of the React material, material plugin. Uh, it was kind of similar to the bootstrap, but it included icons with different colors that I think make alerts more uh, visible, noticeable and nicer as well. So I went ahead and applied those changes. So these are the resulting alerts, um, the successful one, the default, which is used for copying that use case that I showed before, warning and error. I use the 
material icons that we had already included in Jenkins. So Jenkins already had some material icons in, in the source code. So I just reused the ones that were already there, just took the ones that were more similar to uh, the ones that I saw in the example of the material, React material plugin. Uh, apart from, from that, uh, UI visible changes, um, a discussion with Felix, uh, we were using, maybe you can show that quickly from the files changed. Uh, so basically all this uh, behavior was uh, embedded in a JS file, had some behavior that was using Yahoo UI animations. So everything was in the, in the JS file, the JavaScript file. So all the colors were right there. Um, uh, so it was kind of not very nice to maintain. So Felix's idea was to move them to CSS classes, which I did now. So I included these uh, CSS classes for the different notifications. And also the same thing for, uh, for the uh, animations, right? So then all we are doing in the JS file is uh, each state has a class, also the default class and the icon. And then we set remove or add the class accordingly when hiding or showing. So just to show this running, I have, I have Jenkins running here. And now if we click apply, it will show the new alert with still with the fight, fade in and fade out effect, very similar to the one we had. Now it's a bit shorter in the fade in. And it definitely matches the height. And I think the colors are much nicer than the ones we had. The, the icon is SVG, so it scales. So I think it's, I'm quite happy with the result. Um, and that's what I wanted to show. It's a small change, but I think every little helps. So hope you like it. I think it's a dramatic improvement, Roman. I think it's awesome. And thank you for working on this. Happy to, to help and contribute. I'm trying to find the Zoom page again just to stop sharing my screen, but I kind of find it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Zoom hides it. Ah, Zoom hides it. Okay, let me try to find it. Thanks a lot for doing that. We have uh, something like two months before the next LTS baseline cutoff. If you deliver uh, many such features here and there, I believe uh, we can make a really big difference in the next LTS baseline. Uh, the recent one, which was shipped last week, is also uh, also contains some improvements. Uh, special thanks to Felix for uh, font changes because uh, Jenkins looks really different uh, now uh, when you deep diving, uh, deep dive, and yeah, such minor changes really uh, improve the situation a lot. And actually, I had a question. I'm not sure if this is what you mentioned, Alex. So the mm -hmm. LTS. Um, Jenkins, so how do we, how, how are we including, because in the past, I, I think I remember saying this PR goes to LTS, is that still the thing or are, are now we uh, doing it differently? So um, there is a backporting process, it's documented on uh, Jenkins website, I can show you some examples if you want. Uh, uh, yeah, just a second, I'll share my screen. Well, so, so, Roman, just for clarity, I don't think you want to backport this change. Mm -hmm. I assume you want it to go forward in the next LTS and it will naturally be included in the next LTS. Mm -hmm. Just naturally okay. so. No need for an LTS candidate. LTS candidate is used for things that we port backwards to a release ah, that has gosh. occurred previously. Okay, okay, okay. Wasn't sure about that. Yeah. Okay, I appreciate the clarification. Yeah, so yeah, basically we backport uh, fixes and improvements. Uh, well, uh, small UI improvements could be theoretically backported, but generally we target the next uh, baselines. So right now we uh, at the week uh, just second uh, week five stage. So we just released uh, dot one LCS last week, and we are rolling uh, towards uh, this schedule. So you can see that uh, yeah, there will be uh, decision making in five weeks. Uh, if we shifted the dates, so we, we will be choosing the next LCS baseline in five weeks. Commonly, it would have been in seven weeks, but taking uh, the recent uh, issues, we made a retrospective and adjusted to that. So, yeah, but okay. five weeks is enough to deliver uh, some things here and there. 
Great. Mm -hmm. Kim, does it answer the question? Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you again, Roman, for that work. Um, that was actually the last, oh, oops, it was being added, Never mind. Oh, yeah, um, oh, okay. I just added uh, one quick item. So if everybody has sure. some time. Sure, okay. let's do it. Uh, yeah, you may have already seen that when I started sharing the screen. So this dashboard is exactly why you don't let uh, me uh, work on UI. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, long story short, we are uh, working on making a, a public uh, Jenkins roadmap. So basically, community-driven uh, way to highlight uh, the more uh, the stories, uh, which are critical to the Jenkins community. And right now, we have a story for UI UX revamp uh, there. Uh, basically, it represents what happens in a user experience special interest group. And uh, I wanted to get your feedback whether it's enough or whether we could uh, add more items. So, for example, uh, if you go to the documentation, which is linked from here, uh, yeah, assuming that it works in my development version, yeah. So, here basically uh, there are two milestones. So, one is a CSS revamp, another one is full rework. So, for example, we could uh, split it to two items in the roadmap, or we could uh, add more items if there are interest from other SIG members. But it really needs uh, feedback uh, from uh, those who work on this area. So, right now, this roadmap is not complete. Uh, we are just working on that. But if you see something which could be added, please let me know. Okay. I have a, I, I have a, oh, go ahead, Felix. Yeah. Um, you may be right. You you do have a point saying that it may make sense that to separate just pure styling stuff from um, mm -hmm. from more complex changes. Um, we are still discussing within Claudius what to propose to go next after the next batch of styling. Probably will include just the styling things. We 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 will keep doing styling probably, mm -hmm. but we are also looking at more deep changes. Uh, maybe it will make sense to create another entry for those. If you also want to create an entry, for example, uh, maybe it can be good to put uh, to more to give more visibility to the just just sort of changes for forms. They're really big. I I think it's great to. Mm -hmm. call attention to those because they will be a huge change for the Jenkins experience just changing okay. those forms okay I think those are relevant enough mm -hmm. yeah my, my two cents were along those lines that would probably be good to show to have some um, more granular items so that we, we people feel that we are actually delivering stuff because if we have a too big of a task maybe it takes a very long time to be completed yeah, so for instance, what Felix mentioned, like uh, changing forms from tables to divs, maybe that's a big uh, something that we can mention. Maybe other stuff as well. Yeah. So idea for this roadmap is to hint stories on the top level, uh, because there is a lot of initiatives ha happening in different areas, and yeah, this list is not complete. Uh, it will look uh, completely different by the release. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, for example, uh, how it works, so there is URL, and for example, here it uh, points to UX ongoing projects. So mm -hmm. if somebody is willing to update this page to highlight uh, key stories, like uh, ones by Josh, maybe a stories Uli is working on in terms of uh, li uh, uh, JavaScript libraries, etc., uh, we can point to that so visitors uh, can go here and discover more details. Same, you can uh, reference uh, Jira issues, Epics, or GitHub issues. Basically, whatever mm -hmm. you want, it's just a URL. That's good. Mm -hmm. So, just uh, think about what you uh, would like to add, uh, whether it's related to user experience or not. Uh, but yeah, we hope that uh, in a couple of months we will publish uh, a MOLAS final version, which we can uh, present uh, to Jenkins users. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you, Oleg. Anybody else have anything for this meeting? All right. Then uh, I will see you all in two weeks, and I expect everyone will have very creative Zoom backgrounds by that point. I will certainly try to make <laughs> yeah. some.
and I hope everybody right. will have tested and gave, give, given feedback for, for the buttons. And maybe the sidebar, who knows? Yes. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. So, thank, thank you for the job to see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.